with me, I'm with Prof Kuta, who I'll allow to introduce himself. Prof, can you please introduce yourself? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. I am Professor Funsho Kutu, the head of School of Agricultural Sciences here in the University of Mpumalang. Thank you. Okay, so today's meeting, the G24, the Research and Innovation Working Group, um, I want you to share something a little bit around that. What are your expectations of this meeting? What are you looking forward to? Uh, I am grateful for the opportunity to be identified as one of the researchers in UNP that will participate in this forum. I look towards uh, seeing and hearing exciting things about science and innovation, which I can also take forward in terms of my own research work. Yeah. Okay. Prof, can you please summarize the research work? I will try to put the link to your paper, and I know that your paper has been read throughout the world. Can you please tell us um, what was the problem that you're trying to solve in that research and also summarize the findings that come out of it? Uh, I'm a trained soil scientist, and I practice an ag as an agronomist. So basically, my research work focuses on managing soil to support the growth of crops. And we are all aware that one of our greatest challenges in terms of food production now deals with, beside the issue of climate change, soil, soil fertility decline is a major challenge. And uh, most of the research work that I've been undertaking over the years, with great support from different funders, and particularly NRF, it's been quite uh, interesting and quite a number of such projects funded uh, are, are, are there in the course of my career, which I'm very, very grateful for NRF support that I've received over the years. But I must uh, specifically mention there are two key projects that have uh, importance and have played a great role in terms of my research activities. Uh, one of them is the Phosphor Compost Technology Project, which I did some years back. But most importantly, the, the tea project, Fertilization for Tea, which was an internationally funded project. Uh, it was a joint project funding from the NRF and the, the Department of Science and Innovation from India. Yeah. Uh, and, and that came about because of the recognition of the work that I do on the use of compost and the uh, recycling of nutrients to support the growth of crops. Then my partner, my co-PI co from e Tea Research uh, Association of India, Professor Tanmoy Karak, identified this work and contacted me for collaboration. And uh, today is, is, is the history because the collaboration was quite successful. And uh, we do have uh, quite a number of uh, publications from the work. And uh, yeah, quite interesting. But I think I need to share the well, very important information about it, uh, that project, uh, in the sense that uh, we were looking at addressing soil fertility constraints in terms of supporting the growth of tea. And uh, we were using different fertilization approach where we look at inorganic and organic fertilizer application. But the, at the end of this research work, we, a number of findings were reported. But the most exciting one that uh, I want to refer to is the article we published on the, the use of, of, of tea to provide micronutri address micronutrient deficiencies in humans. And that publication was quite exciting, and uh, it was a review article, quite exciting, and as it has received quite a lot of citation, and uh, have been known and get invitations or invites to share these articles, which is now in the public domains. And uh, the citation is quite great, and uh, people can check that out on my. I will also I will also try to write a research nugget on uh, this research. When you explained it to me, it sounded very interesting. And we believe in research that impact the society. Um, any last word or key findings from you? This exciting uh, research. The, the, the key finding is in that article is that we've been able to indicate, quantify, 
how much micronutrients, particularly zinc and iron, which are very important for human health, and how much adults, young, old, female and male can, can derive following the consumption of tea. And that for me is quite interesting because it helps to address micronutrient deficiency. The consumption of tea can help address the issue of micronutrient deficiency. And I'm also in the case, there was also a paper on product review which compares the micronutrient that are derived from South African tea and India tea. And those two papers are available on the internet. Thank you so much, Professor Kut. It's the Science Matter podcast at the Research and Innovation Working Group G20 meeting here in University of Mpumalang. Science Matter, where we emphasize that science matter and we discuss science matters. Thank you.